Thank you for your patronage. Thank you! What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Metzigan Reacts. My name is Callie Lacerda. And I am Batman. I'm Batman. <laughs> I should have started like that. I'm yeah. Um, we are not oblivious. Is it oblivious, the word? We oblivious, are, yeah. We are not oblivious to how popular of a superhero Batman is. I think that it's in debate against maybe Spider-Man as the most popular superhero of all time, like worldwide, around the globe. Um, I've never gotten into, I think I never had the time as a kid. I had a pretty like fucked up childhood, if you will, like in my estimations at least. And I never really like got into that whole thing. I was always the kid that kind of went to their friend's house and like, you know, um, saw that they had all these action figures, these superhero action figures that they had all these video games, superhero video games and all that stuff that I didn't really have. And so, like, that's as far as my understanding went. And then as an adult, in my older years, I just never really got into it. And I never really, like, forced myself to watch superhero movies, even though I know they're largely popular. Like, you can't get away from references and memes online. And that's how I know that his voice is, like, you know, like, especially Christian Bale's voice. It's like, I'm Batman. <laughs> yeah. You know? And I've seen videos. I've seen footages. I've seen clips online. Because you can't escape it. Right. But I never, like, dove deep into it, kind of. Yeah, like, I've never watched The Dark Knight, is it, with the Heath, Leather, Heath Ledger Joker? Heath Ledger, yeah, But I yeah. know the Heath Ledger Joker. I just have right, never I've, seen The Dark Knight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I've seen clips online of him going, like, why he's so serious? Yeah. You know, like, his, like, constant licking and stuff. And you see other influencers and TV shows make those references and other movies. And so I think it was just a matter of time before we finally kind of started our journey within the superhero world, even though we already started with Spider-Man across the multiverse. But that's more Marvel, right? Marvel and Sony, and this one is DC. So this is the official DC introduction. And in a lot of ways for both of us, I think, if my memory serves me right, it's our first time watching a DC film. Yeah, I've never I've never watched a DC movie, I don't think. Right. I've never just really like gotten into it. But at then, least not fully, like not one fully, no. Yeah, and these props right here, these um costumes, we actually fun fact, we got these randomly at a party city store uh for one of our podcast episodes because we do full length uh conspiratorial podcasts on our other channel, Mentally Gone. And we just found these and we thought it would be funny. And we used it for the intro of one of our podcast episodes. And then we just left them to kind of collect dust. And so we just dusted them off right now to do this. And we thought it was fitting. And then also, really interesting, right? Um, touching on what I just said before about my childhood and me like witnessing friends having all these things, these games and their houses looking like Toys R Us. Um, this was a game that I saw while browsing the catalog at my local uh, vintage gaming shop. It's called literally Batman Begins. I don't know if the camera's going to focus, so I'm going to hold it close to myself because it focuses on my face and not my. if I put it too close. But Batman Begins for the PlayStation 2. I, pr I picked this up yesterday for 13 bucks pre-owned, obviously. And, and it's funny, and I think it's very fitting. And this was one of the reasons why I kind of like ran the idea by her for us to sit down and start watching Batman trilogy, you know, like watch the whole trilogy on the channel. It's because it says right on the cover, free inside, one adult Batman Begins movie ticket. And then on the back it says, free movie ticket inside, see inside for details, free Batman Begins movie ticket, only good at participating movie theaters in the United States towards one admission price up to $12. And then it says that it, the offer expires july 6th 2005 wow that's so cool and so june right now we're we're heading into july and i think it's just like everything aligned for us to kind of like do this you know mm -hmm. and also just this my last plug-in <laughs> oh uh, yeah because he'll go on no, i'm kidding <laughs> yeah um our our third youtube channel is a gaming channel for anybody interested where both of us uh, sit down and experience similar to how we experience and react to movies and give our commentary and our review at the end 
we do the same with video games. And so we don't limit ourselves to just next gen. Like we have a PS5, we have a Nintendo Switch. We don't limit ourselves to just that. We also have like vintage consoles that we've been collecting. And so I haven't had the time yet to sit down with this one because I just got it. But I'll be playing it eventually on the channel. And we'll also be playing games like Batman, Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, Arkham Knight, and, and experiencing Batman through different mediums kind of. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So that's all I have to say. And um, do you have anything else to say in the intro before we jump in? Um, no, I don't think so. I'm just excited. I I know like <coughs> I know of the different um, people that play Batman and stuff. Yeah. And the different people that play Joker, obviously. Like there's a new Joker two coming out. For yeah, the with um, I think Joaquin it Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix and yeah. Lady Gaga. Right. Um, but but yeah, I know that the one that we're going to watch is christian bale and that's as far as i know right and um, i've i know like a little bit about like you know bruce wayne like because obviously i've i we've done like reaction videos before mm -hmm. and people will just flood the comments like even when we do marvel reactions like to trailers yeah um people will flood the comments talking about you know dc stuff yeah and so like i know a little bit and I'm just excited to actually see what it's about, you know? I'm excited to see what the hype is about, just like like anything else, you know? And see see if there's any real-life value in these superhero movies, which I'm sure there are, because in the sense they're, they represent the archetype of certain things that we humans kind of really relate to. And I'm just excited to, like, jump in. Yeah, me Ready? too. Yes, All let's right, so go. let's get into it. But before we do, I'm going to quickly change costumes because I am blind as a bat, literally as Batman. And I can't wear my glasses with this mask on. So I'm just going to quickly transition back magically to my usual setup with the glasses and the hat. One, two, three. And here I am, <laughs> back with my glasses on. So now I'm no longer Batman. I am... Callie Lacerda, and let's just jump right into it. Ready? And fun fact, I also um, wear glasses, but I don't use them on here. Yeah, I can't see Jack if I don't have my glasses on. So Batman begins, I'm assuming this is his um, becoming Batman. Find your keepers! Oh! Oh, shoot. Fell inside of a well, it seems. Bruce Manor. Ooh, there we go. Oh, wow. Oh, he was having a flashback. Look at him, Christian Bill. Look at him. Uh oh. I am the devil. I don't think he he's Batman yet. Like, he doesn't. In practice. <laughs> Oh. Whoa. oh, never mind. Nice. He's got that dog in him, dude. Yeah, it seems unfair that they're all ganging up on him. Yeah. No. I'm wondering how he got Are you so here. desperate to fight criminals that you lock yourself in to take them on one at a time? Isn't that Liam Neeson? That's what I was going to say. Tomorrow you will be released. There is a rare blue flower. If you can carry it to the top of the mountain, you may find what you were looking for. What was I looking for? Only you can know that. Hmm. Interesting. I already have a few notes. Look at that. What country is this? Is this like Iceland? Might even be Japan, I don't know. Vietnam or something. Wait, so how did he leave prison? Was he released? Like, did he do his term and then leave, or did he just mm, walk yeah, out? Yeah, he told him, you will be released tomorrow, and then they just tossed him on the oh, road. Oh, that's right. Look at that. Wow. like a temple or something yeah I don't have an attack to manipulate the fears and others you must first master your own are you ready to begin Ooh. Uh, bars I can barely stand death does not wait for you to be ready death is not considerate for all hmm. you are afraid 
Not of me. What do you fear? Hmm. Is he fear bats? Hmm. Maybe. Would we be needing an Avalis lost away? I'm very sorry, sir. Don't I've worry. Told... It's fine. So the girl's name is Rachel. Oh, that's like an arrow. Um, uh, spearhead. Spearhead, yeah. I'm assuming that's the the iconic butler in the cartoons, you know? Mm-hmm. I forgot his name, though. I can't remember his name. They were afraid of you. All creatures feel fear. Even the scary ones. Especially the scary ones. It's hmm. interesting. Gotham's been good to our family, but the city's been suffering. So we built a new, cheap public transportation system. And at the center, hmm. Wayne Tower. Wayne Tower. I leave the running of our company to much better men. Better? Wow. More interested men. So he, so he basically owns Gotham. Right. But it seems like he's, you know... Humble. Helping, like, helping assist it. For yeah. the greater good, kind of. Watching the play. All the bats and stuff. Yeah. Interesting. Here we go. What's wrong, Bates? No, no, it, it was me. I just needed some fresh air. Wow. Oh, it's defending him. Oh, alleyways, dark. Whoa. <gasps> Take it easy. No, oh, no. Oh, no. Take it and go. I said you were. <gasps> Wait, I didn't even. Oh, it's happening so fast. I know. I didn't even see what happened. It happened so fast. And I think that, that that's by design, you know? It's like these things happen so quickly. Look at that. Don't be afraid. Last words his dad said is don't be afraid. Hmm. Says your father's. It's okay. Oh, that's crazy. We got him, son. Oh, they got the guy. Yeah, but that doesn't do anything, see? It was my fault. How f I no, made the need to no, 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 no. If my hand got scared. It was nothing that you did. Oh, sure. I miss him, Alfred. I miss him so much. So do I, Master. Master, wow. You know how to fight six men. We can teach you how to engage 600. Hmm. You know how to disappear. We can teach you to become truly invisible. Hmm. Your parents' death was not your fault. It was your father's. Interesting. You haven't beaten me. You've sacrificed your footing for a killing stroke. Hmm. Oh, wow. You are stronger than your father. I know the rage that drives you, that impossible anger, strangling the grief until the memory of your loved one is just poison in your veins. Wow. Your anger gives you great power, but if you let it, it will destroy you as it almost did me. What stopped it? Vengeance. That's no help to me. Why could you not avenge your parents? This guy speaks in, in poetry. Why do you give a damn, Alfred? It's not your family. I give a damn because a good man once made me responsible for what was most precious to him. Doors has offered her to drive you to the hearing. Aww, he seems so caring. I wouldn't presume to tell you what to do with your past. Just know that there are those of us who care about what you do with your future. Damn. You haven't given up on me yet. Never. Oh my god. Wow, like I can't even take a break. So many quotable moments. It's I like know. just hitting you back to back to back. Alfred still keeps the condensed milk on the top shelf. Doesn't he notice you're tall enough to reach now? We'll have his thigh hard, I guess. Never used to stop us anyway. No, I didn't. Oh, that's Rachel probably, right? She misses this place. So do I. Yeah. And you? I'm not staying, Rachel. You're just back for the hearing. Oh, so the hearing. So it is after, right? He's just back. His crime was appalling, yes, but it was motivated not by greed, but by desperation. So with one of this office's most important investigations, we strongly endorse his petition for early release. Mm -mm. <laughs> Leaves a child orphaned. Oh. Mm -hmm. But he's waiting outside for him. He, yeah, it's, you know, better yet that he's set free. Yeah. So he can take care of business himself. Oh man, he's gonna just kill him right now? 
Oh. Oh. I don't think he did it, right? Falcone paid him off to get chill out in the open. Maybe I should be thanking them. Oh, okay. My parents deserve justice. You care about justice? Look beyond your own pain, Bruce. This city is rotting. No, Falcone may not have killed your parents, Bruce. He's destroying everything that they stood for. She's basically telling him who his real enemy is. Right. But here you go. Hmm. That's where Falcone is. All these years I wanted to kill him. Now I can't. Damn. Damn. Mm, she's disappointed. Your father would be ashamed of you. Whoa. Imagine he just shoots her right now. It's like, what'd you say? It's Mr. Wayne. No gun. I'm insulted. Pat him down. <laughs> Look around you. You'll see two consummate. A uh, union official, couple off-duty cops, and a judge. Oh, that's the judge. You have a second's hesitation in blowing your head off right here and right now in front of him. Now, that's power you can't buy. Sheesh. Don't come down here with your anger. This is a world you never understand. And you always fear what you don't understand. <laughs> Even the bad guy has, like, bars, you know? Yeah, so I think that this is before he went. In the joint, Chill told me, uh, told me about the night he killed your parents. He said your father begged for mercy. Begged like a dog. Ooh. Oh, no. Wrong yeah. choice of words. This probably is before because he seems like an un... un um, unseasoned. Unseasoned, yeah, person. And then the other one was a veteran. A nice goat. Be careful if sees you with that. They're going to come looking for me. Ooh, everyone. I'm trying to understand, like, what's the symbolism behind him exchanging coats with that man? Oh, this is how he makes himself, like, makes his way. Fool, what the hell do I care what your name is? You're a criminal. What was your friend you want? Tell that to the guy who owned these. Wayne Enterprises. How ironic. China. What you really fear is inside yourself. You fear your own power, your anger, the drive to do great, terrible things. You are ready. Huh. And he shaved again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Breathe in your fears. Face them. You must bask in the fear of other men. It's like hallucinogenic. You have to become a terrible thought. This is so cool. Oh my god, this is so sick. I love this view, this point of view. It's like he's speaking directly inside of my head. Yeah, and inside of his head. Oh no, is it Come on with the darkness? It's going to be bats. Yeah, that's what I'm assuming. Oh. Focus. Concentrate. So I'm already one page. One page down. <gasps> oh shoot he did it wow impressive yeah that's crazy we have purged your fear mm. you are ready to lead these men but first you must demonstrate your commitment to justice oh damn it's gonna be his first kill i think mm -hmm. i'm no executioner your compassion is a weakness your enemies will not share that's why it's so important Ooh. This is the most important function of the League of Shadows. It is one we performed for centuries. God must be destroyed. Destroyed? The city is one that is that built, basically. I don't know if Batman is known for killing people. I think that he's the superhero that doesn't. Oh, shoot. <gasps> Oh my gosh! Wow. Oh my man. What did they expect? They gave him the weapons to, you yeah, know, stand up for himself. Exactly. All the skills too. That's it. He's doing what he has to do. Okay, I like Batman. <laughs> I like Batman. Ah! 
Oh, wow. Just like that. Wow. Oh, shoot. He's dead? Mm, yep. Wow, and he's still going to save um, that guy. I, I, I didn't catch his name. Ooh, ooh. Ah. Ah, my arm. Ah, my shoulder. Ouch. Ah, that's insane. I, I can't imagine you trying to single-handedly hold a 200-pound man. I will tell him you said he's alive. Yeah, he definitely looks older here. <laughs> he looks seasoned. Yeah. Look at that. He's been through stuff. People need dramatic examples to shake them out of apathy, and I can't do that as Bruce Wayne. As a man, I'm flesh and blood. I can be ignored. I can be destroyed. But as a symbol, well, I can be incorruptible. Mm. Wow. You've been gone seven years. You had me declared dead? Well, actually, it was Mr. Earl. He's taking the company public. He wanted to liquidate your majority shareholding. Those shares are worth quite a bit of money. Wow. Well, that's a good thing I left everything to you, then. Quite so, sir. <laughs> or the rolls, if you like. Just bring it back with a full tank. Oh, shit. <laughs> I oh. like Alfred, man. So uh, Alfred. no one knows that he's returning. Yeah. And he's going to... The work offered by organized crime must have an attraction to the insane. Oh, shoot. What are you doing, Rachel? What are you doing, Carl? Looking out for you. Wasn't this guy at the bar, at the, at the Falcone bar? That's sweet. Oh. Yeah, I don't think anybody knows yet. Mm -hmm. Is that a bat? <laughs> it sounds yeah, either a bat or a rat. Which a bat is just a rat with wings in my head. Or a bird. Uh -oh. oh, it's a bat. Oh, he just had his epiphany. Yeah. The source of his fear. Interesting, right? Yeah. That before he takes on the underworld, he has to confront physically because he has to become his fear very profound a lot of symbolism in this he's st he stands up in his fear you know stand up in your fear wow there's so many i know he's coming to gotham Yes, he is. And when he gets here, he's not going to want to hear that you have endangered our operation just to get your thugs out of a little jail time. Is he talking about the guy? Raz, whatever? Hmm, maybe. I'm here to see Mr. Earl. Name? Uh, Bruce Wayne. <laughs> She's like, uh. <laughs> I think I know who you are, you know? Yeah. Bruce, you're supposed to be dead. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> oh, and he's... A little playboy. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are. Ooh. Gas powered magnetic grapple gun. The 350 pound test monofilament. What? Wow. Bulletproof. Anything but a straight shot. Why didn't they put it into production? Bean counters didn't think a soldier's life was worth 300 grand. Ooh, wow. Oh, he's spray painting in matte black. This is literally Batman beginning, you know? It's like the beginning of Batman. It's the beginning of me. Look no, at that. Batman. Matte black finish, man. That's so sick. We place an order to a Chinese company for these. They'll have to be uh, large orders uh, to avoid suspicion. 10,000. Well, at least we'll have spares. Interesting. Yeah, because if you custom order a Batman mask... People will know who's Batman, but that, that's so true. Look at him looking like a criminal vigilante. You're a good cop, one of the few. Carmine Falcone brings in shipments of drugs every week. He's paid up with the right people. Who are you? Watch for my sign. A stapler. You saw that? You're just one man. We. Oui. Oh my god. Ooh. Oh shoot. Yeah, that was not planned at all, I bet. 
<laughs> I mean, it wasn't seamless, but you still made it. Do you have any lightweight fabrics? I think I have just the thing. <laughs> if you're uncomfortable. Mr. Wayne, you don't want to tell me exactly what you're doing when I'm asked. I don't have to lie. Don't think of me as an idiot. Fair enough. This is so fascinating, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Oh, you wouldn't be interested in that. <laughs> you wouldn't be like, interested in that. Are you? No. no. Look at that. Wow. Just has to make that black, too. You're on the throttle. Flip that open and throttle up. This will boost you into a rampless jump. He just does it. <laughs> so what do you think? Does it come in black? Oh. <laughs> I just love how they're showing, like, the whole process. Yeah. From basically, like, building this identity with his bare hands. Oh, Ooh. there it is. First glance. The bat symbol. Wow, look Black at that. Lost the white. That's frightened me. This time my enemy shared my dread. Hmm. It's like a ninja star, you know, that he probably learned with Ra's al Ghul. With the League of Shadows. He's the leader of the League of Shadows in this house. Dudes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is the shipment, right? Yeah. Continue. I predict that this guy is going to be taken down first. Ooh, here we go, baby. Here we go. Oh, that is so brilliant. Yeah, it's a bat. Plant the seeds of the symbol. What? Oh, wow, look at that. It's like he doesn't know where to turn. Mm hmm. Oh, man. Where are you? Here. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Oh, he didn't bail. He didn't bail. Even he's scared. What the hell are you? Uh-oh. I'm Batman. <laughs> that's, that's one of those uh, memeable s scenes that I've seen on the internet, you know, multiple times. I'm Batman. Batman. Nice coat. Nice coat. <gasps> oh, shoot. Full <gasps> sh I just got full body chills right now. Wow, oh, what shoot. a full circle moment. That's why they planted that homeless guy. I, I knew that he served like a bigger purpose. And then his coat is wear down the same way, you know? She's talking too much. But he's aware. Yeah, I knew he was going to show up. That's right. You better run. <laughs> she thinks she... Falcone sent them to kill you. Why? You rattled his cage. What's this? Leverage. For what? To get things moving. And he's gone. I knew it. I was just waiting for her to look away, too. Yeah. <laughs> look, he, he stapled Falcone into the light. Wow. So that it casted his shadow. Oh, shoot. Wow. A bad symbol. Oh, my God, dude. What? Is he dead? No, right? No, because he doesn't kill, right, remember? Right, right, right. I just want to make sure. No way to bury it now. Maybe so, but there's still Judge Faden. Even if these guys will swear in court to being thrashed by a giant bat, we've got Falcone at the scene. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I've seen him. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> what does someone like me do? Oh, drive sports cars. Date movie stars. <sighs> Push-ups. <laughs> the ship was carrying a prototype weapon. It's a, a microwave emitter. It's designed for uh, desert warfare. But it, it, it looks like somebody uh, turned it on. <laughs> Ooh. It uses oh focus microwaves to uh, vaporize the enemy's water supply. Oh, shoot. The weapon itself is uh, missing. Yeah. Oh, it's missing? Yeah. Wow, look at that. Playboy. Jeez. Billionaire. 
Damn, Look at him. how many girls are there? Two? Yeah. Oh, I thought there was more. <laughs> oh, that's funny. One for each arm. I knew. <laughs> you can't take the law into your own hand. At least he's getting something done. Well, a guy dresses up like a bat clearly has issues. <laughs> 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 Sir, the pool is for decoration, and your friends do not have swimwear. Well, they're European. European. <laughs> He's gonna write a it check. It is not a question <laughs> of money. You see, I'm buying this hotel. <laughs> Setting some new rules about the pool area. Oh my god, that's so oh, amazing. I, I could predict all the Playboy moves. I would heard you were back. What are you doing? Uh, just swimming. Wow, it is good to see you. Oh. More hotels for you to buy. <laughs> Down, you may still be that same great kid you used to be. It's not who you are underneath. It's what you do that defines you. Why is everybody so so deep? Like yeah, everybody's no a one philosopher. Speaks this way. I know. I know. Life. It's like it kind of gets distracting at certain points. I'll say that. With these crazies, you can't stand. So when did the nut take over the nut house? Oh shit! Oh, it's the same. Oh my god, it's loud. It's the same fume. He's not faking. Not that one. I'll talk to the judge and see if I can get him moved to the secure wing at Arkham. I can't treat him here. Can't treat him here. Wow, it's the same fumes that Ra's al Ghul made. <laughs> yeah, Bruce. so he's working for him. Yeah, and so that's that gave it away. Mission to Love set up a massive task force to catch you. He thinks you're dangerous. What do you think? I think you're trying to help. As soon as they look away. I always know it, dude. And I always expect it now. Like, as <laughs> soon as you get that little moment. Oh, I knew he was going to go. I don't know. I swear to God. I swear to me. <laughs> wow, look at that. <laughs> Ooh, just playing <laughs> yo-yo with the guy. Yeah. We don't want to know what's in Mr. Falcone's crate. No. Things are working a little differently now. Open it up. Mm, so the city's getting cleansed. <laughs> Wayne Enterprises. So this probably that machine. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh. Oh. Oh, look at the teddy bears. With the drugs. The rabbits. It's gone. It's finally gone. Taking a leak. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, it might work. Oh my god. You need to lighten up. <gasps> oh, is it anti inflammable? I don't oh know. no. Good thing it's raining. Yeah, stop, drop, and roll. Come on, they taught it in school. Oh, wow. He was not prepared for that. I wonder if he got burned. Yeah, I'm surprised that his, his jaw and the part that's exposed didn't get affected. We fall to have the opportunity to get back up. How long was I out? Two days. Damn. Two days. It's your birthday. Happy oh. birthday. Many happy returns. It's probably rough on Alfred to see him like this, you know? Bottom line, I synthesized an antidote. Could you make more? Wow. You're planning on gassing yourself again, Miss Wayne? I was going to say he's... It's Mr. Fox. You're out at night looking for kicks. Someone's passing around the weaponized hallucinogens. I'll bring what I have. <laughs> the antidote should inoculate you for now. Alfred, always a pleasure. I was going to say he's going to fine tune his costume pretty soon. Yeah. For this uh, occasion. I have to get back. I just wanted to leave this. Thank you. Rachel? Oh, it's a birthday gift. I'm sorry I can't come tonight. I was just dropping off your present. You've got better plans? 
My boss has been missing for two days, which in this... Oh, yeah. You start by looking at the bottom of the river. Rachel. Yeah, he probably is sleeping with the fishes. Look, another mafia reference. They killed? You're going to Arkham now. It's in the Narrows, Rachel. You enjoy your party, Bruce. Some of us have work to do. Damn. Be careful. What, girl? He's doing all the work. He's doing more than you. <laughs> yeah, like he helped you do your work. Yeah. <laughs> Little do you know. Oh, let's see. <gasps> oh, shoot. Oh, do you think it's... Oh, there you go. It's the spearhead. Aw. But why is she giving it back to him? Because they fought over it as kids. Finders keepers. Oh, that's we'll right. Arriving. Keep them happy until I arrive. Tell them that joke, you know. Tell them that joke, you know. <laughs> Entertain the guests. Oh, that's the entrance of the back cave. Look at that. It's like those um those spy movies. Hidden book shelves yeah. and stuff. Wow, there it is. Da -da. Like Batman's costume is the coolest costume in my opinion from all superheroes. Yeah, that I that I've seen. Yeah. I want all the information on the development of this project. All data, files, backup disks on my desk right away. Did you lose one? Oh no. And I'm firing you. What? Did you get the memo? Wow. Screw that guy, dude. Like, I don't like how, like, I get why Bruce didn't pursue the top, but... Oh, this is Arkham Asylum, which is yeah. what the game is based on that I told about um, at the beginning. What's Scarecrow? Patients suffering delusional episodes often focused... Scarecrow. Usually one conforming to Jungian archetypes. Union. In this case, Jungian. Scarecrow. See, archetypes, I said that at the beginning. What exactly you put him on? First thing tomorrow, then. Tonight. I've already paid Dr. Lehman at County General. <clears throat> As you wish. Oh, no. Ah, she's a liability. She's a threat to everything that's going on. She's in his asylum, you know? Right. Wow, look at that. This is where we make the medicine. <gasps> Putting it directly in the water supply of Gotham to make everybody go insane. Perhaps you should have some clear your head. Oh my god, imagine. Don't drink the water, people say. That's crazy. Oh, oh yeah. no. I had a feeling. Interesting how they didn't show her biggest fear, and I wonder what it is. At this point, they can't stop us. She hasn't got law. I give her a concentrated dose. The mind can only take so much. Now, go. The mind can only take so much. Wait, so he just poisoned her mind just like that? I heard it can disappear. Well, we'll find out, won't we? Well, Batman has an antidote. Yeah. So he's probably going to use it to save her. Right, I forgot. It's so refreshing to see the bad guys scared. Mm -hmm. You know, like, most movies don't show them scared all the time. Yeah. It usually shows them, like, very, um... Overcompensating, you know? I'm surprised he doesn't kill not one person. Yeah. And, and, I, and I have a comment about that towards the end. I'm gonna, like, comment on it. Taste of your medicine, doctor. <laughs> Concentrated dose. What have you been doing here? <gasps> oh my oh god. Oh my gosh. Dr. Green isn't here right now. But if you'd like to make an appointment. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot. That's crazy. His oh biggest my gosh. fear is Batman. Because Batman's the only one that poses a threat to his operation. I guess. I don't know. That's like a demonic one, though. Yeah, it looks like the devil, literally. <laughs> What's his name again? I forgot the the good cop's name. Oh, I can't even keep track of the names. Swat's on the way. The guy's lazy. Lazy guy's like, the Swat's on the way. Just let him deal with it. Yeah, so they're both cops? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. 
just one's more corrupt. And I, I don't think he's corrupt, but I don't know if I could trust him yet. Mm. He seems trustworthy. He has a family. He seems like a decent man. Just, you know, a good apple in the middle of bad apples. Yeah, but not trustworthy enough to know yeah, that yeah. man's identity. Mm-hmm. What's happened to her? Cream poisoned her with a psychotropic hallucinogen. We get it out to the medics. They can't help her, but I can. It's very climactic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Meet me in the alley on the narrow side. Oh, that sound, right? Look. The screech. I need to get her the antidote before the damage becomes permanent. How long does she have? Not long. They sound, yeah, yeah, they sound like bats. Back up. Cause I, oh, back up. Yeah, look, that's so sick. Yeah, it's screeching, I knew oh it. It sounded. And that just adds to his legend because he's able to control animals, you know? Yeah. Everyone's going to have a healthy fear of bats after yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, everybody's gonna turn into <laughs> Batman now. <laughs> Oh, that's so sick. And he moves through it. Wow. That's amazing. Where's Rachel? Well, he told oh. the cop guy to take her and meet him. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh shit, that's the guy. Excuse me. Oh, just let him. They're like, so anyways, uh, <laughs> I was walking down the street and it was like telling each other stories. I'll get my car. Oh, yeah. I brought yeah. mine. Yours. Ooh, shoot, dude. Oh, that's so insane. <gasps> what? You're telling me no one died right there. I got to get one of those, he said. Cool. Make it color. I don't think anyone was in that car. Oh, look. Look, they were. Tank. It's a black tank. <laughs> That's so sick. Wait slowly. I wonder if she's going to discover that he's Batman. That he's Bruce? Yeah, that Bruce is yeah. Batman. Shortcut. Shortcut. How do they shoot these scenes, man? Like, like, what city do you think this is? Is this like New York, or is it like Chicago, Detroit? No clue. He's got no way off that roof. Turn off your engines. Turn off your engines, dude. You don't know who you're talking to. Imagine it starts flying. Oh, that would be crazy. Look at him. What? What's going on? Oh shoot. And now he's driving it like a motorcycle. <laughs> She's freaking out. She's poisoned, hallucinating stuff. <laughs> oh, man. It's the craziest trip in human history right there. Look at that, I man. just, I wonder, how does he escape? He's literally cornered every way. And I think that Fox said that this vehicle was supposed to be like the bridge. Right, so he's like bridging gaps with it right now, which is interesting. This is so sick, guys. Oh my god. Coming right up on his butt. That's what she said. Coming right up on his butt. What? Look, oh my gosh, I have so much to say about this. Write he, it down so you don't forget. He doesn't believe in killing people, but any of these actions could easily kill someone. <laughs> yeah, maybe. No, not maybe. If you've been in a car accident, like, it's that easy. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, look, he went incognito. Wow, look at that. He just disappeared. I lost him. I was like, not looking for a second. Stay with me. They don't even notice. Look. Oh, he's moving like a bat in between them. Yeah. Just like he would with the... Damn, this thing is indestructible. During the training. Right. 
Yeah, that's a good observation, right? In between the men. Yeah. But it's kind of brilliant and very good that she passed out just as he was making an entrance into the Batcave, you know? Yeah. Because then she doesn't even know that you go through a waterfall to get into it. And also, it's a it's meant to be that way so that they, there wouldn't be any inkling of her knowing right. on purpose, like you said. Any loose ends. They put it all in. They must have been at this for weeks. Got them entire water supplies laced with it. Oh, my God. The effects must be a compound that has to be absorbed in the lungs. Uh, but wouldn't they have tested that though? Like the crane doctor guy, the scarecrow guy? Get these to Gordon, and Gordon alone, trust no one. One for Gordon to inoculate himself, the other for mass production. Crane was just a pawn. We need to be ready. Oh yeah, so he's already suspecting that, uh, what's his name? I can't say his name, Raz al Ghul? Raz al Ghul, yeah. That he'll be back. I had to write it down too. It's a hard name to remember. We need to send these people away now. Those are Bruce Wayne's guests out there, sir. You have a name to maintain. I don't care about my name. It's your father's name, and it's all that's left of him. Hmm. He's a great actor. Don't destroy him. He's, like, making me emotional. Oh, my God, I almost cried just there. I don't know why. I think it's because I don't have a dad, and I haven't had a dad growing up. The key thing is our company's future is secure. Great. Our company. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, this is all in the same night. Mm-hmm. It's not what it looks like. <laughs> It'll be worse for wear, I'm afraid. Uh, uh, they're <laughs> like just seeing this old man carry this girl they're who's like, been drugged. like, do we need to call the cops? <laughs> <laughs> I need you to go back to Wayne Enterprises right now and start making more of that antidote. I think the police are going to need as much as they can get their hands on, okay? Uh, my security clearance has been revoked. That wouldn't stop a man like you now, would it? I suppose not. <laughs> <laughs> I also firmly trust Fox. We must meet. Now, am I pronouncing this right? Mr. Raz Al Ghul? <gasps> oh, no. He let the wolves no. in his home? Two-faced friends, you sycophantic suck-ups. Stop smiling. It's not a joke. Please leave. The party's over. Get out. The apple has fallen very far from the tree, Mr. Oh my gosh. The apple has fallen far from the tree, but it's interesting, right? How he, like, it's just, but it's cool though, because he has to push everybody away from him as far as possible. Amusing, but pointless. He has to make himself radioactive. Then watch Gotham tear itself apart through fear. Mm. Very interesting. Holy moly. Oh. oh, shoot. Damn. Oh, they're letting the, pr the inmates loose. Every time a civilization reaches the pinnacle of its decadence, we return to restore the balance. Gotham isn't beyond saving. You are defending a city so corrupt we have infiltrated every level of its infrastructure. Interesting, right? It's like it's an age-old organization. It's like the hidden hand of history. Time to play correcting its course mm. even the SWAT so that's supposed to be symbolic it's every level when forest grows too wild a purging fire is inevitable and natural <gasps> no if someone stands in the way of true justice you simply walk up behind them and stab them in the heart oh no oh my gosh you burned my house and left me for dead. Consider us even. He saved you, dude. Oh saved you from gosh. falling off the cliff. Oh, I'm angry at freaking Liam Neeson now. No one comes out. Make sure. There goes his parents' uh, manor. I know, right? I'll raise the bridges when I get every available unit out here to catch the homicidal maniacs that are running loose out there. Come on. Oh, she woke up. She has a mission. Come on, Rachel. Run to Fox. Come on, come on. No time to lose. Oh, crazy, man. Imagine. Legacy. Your whole family legacy. Oh, Alfred. I hope you will not remember the fire brigade. Let's 
go, Alfred. Alfred! Wow. Oh, man. Curious at the unprecedented show of police strength to round up the inmates, the situation oh, lady. is... We're about to raise these bridges. Sir, I'm a Gotham City District Attorney. Let me pass. Well, just like that, she doesn't have to show any proof. <laughs> Unless she's got some way of getting that crap into the air. All right, last one across. That guy does not look like a SWAT guy. <laughs> Uh, he looks like a ninja, you know? Time to spread the word. And the word is... Panic. Oh, shoot. Already? I know Reddit's happening so fast. Oh, even they got sprayed with it. And they're doing it in these impov- Like, in this impoverished part. Right. Of Gotham. <laughs> Oh yeah, so he has one to inoculate himself. I wonder what this guy's fear is. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Oh my <gasps> god, you saw that? Crushing his skull. Oh my, I thought they were doing some cannibal stuff right there for a sec. <laughs> Nobody left to save it. If they get their machine into Wayne Station, it'll cause a chain reaction that'll vaporize the entire city's water supply. Covering Gotham in this poison. I'm gonna stop it from loading that train, but I may need your help. What do you need? Can you drive stick? <laughs> Can you drive stick? <laughs> Damn. She has good aim from there. <laughs> Oh man, they're like zombies. Zombified. Batman will save us. Uh. Prepare to lower the bridge. I told you I'd come. It's like his savior. I know. And the kid kind of looks like Rachel a little bit. It kind of look alike. At least tell me your name. It's not who I am underneath, but what I do that defines me. That gives it away. Bruce? Oh, shit. What? Of course he had to give it away. He, he's in love with her. Oh, I just got full body chills. Come on. She wasn't going to know. But I wasn't expecting him to reveal it to her. Come on. I don't know what it is, but the, the soundtrack, maybe. Look at that. You see that? Look. That's crazy, man. Wow. Oh my god. I can't beat two of your pawns. As you wish. Oh. Come on. They've been down this rodeo before with him. I know, but but he's just trying to buy time, I think. Yeah, but I'm saying like he can easily take them on. Yeah. Oh, look at this. <laughs> What's his name, Gordon? Gordon, yeah. Gordon Ramsay. Look at him. The chef. He's, he's cooking. He's living out a little dream right now. Yeah. It's like zombies, literally. Yeah. My fear would be like AI robots. <laughs> yeah. I would turn into a robot. Oh, heck no. I don't know what my fear is, honestly. I would have to think about that. Sharks. Sharks, yeah. I have an irrational fear of sharks. I think I, I would turn into the shark man, maybe. <laughs> and like lurk in the ocean. I would turn into an AI robot, I guess. Yeah. That's pretty dope, huh? I'm surprised that he learned so quickly how to control that thing, you know? It's 
It's wow. like a roller coaster. <laughs> I was about to say, it's like a roller coaster. <laughs> it's gonna blow. I'd have a fun time on that. Yeah. Not a fan of roller coasters, personally. Come on, you have one job. Don't be afraid, Bruce. I just like how as the train is moving, all of the pipes are bursting with it, you know? Because it's a microwave machine, so... Oh, there we go. So it's gonna derail. <laughs> oh shoot! If you finally learn to do what is necessary, I won't kill you. But I won't save you either. But I don't have to save you. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Fun fact: I wrote the script for this movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's just gonna embrace it. That's it. Brace yourself for impact. I mean, what can he do? Yeah, because... And he has to be dead, because... If he didn't die now... Because at the end of the day, he is just a mortal man, you know? Oh, and now he definitely has yeah, to be dead. There's no, absolutely no chance this guy lives. <laughs> It's like the crash was enough, but that yeah. that's like the tipping point right there. And this guy, not all heroes wear capes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this cop. It literally is the the that phrase that was coined like not all cops are bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's this guy right here. You did it. That was all you, buddy. Look at him flying like a bat. That's so sick, dude. And that's how they became best friends. I got another job. Yours. <laughs> Batman Wayne. may have made the front page, but Bruce Wayne got pushed to page eight. Drunken billionaire burns down his home. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Look, it's all a bit technical, but the important thing is that my company's future is secure. Right, Mr. Fox? Right you are, Mr. Wayne. Ah, oh, perfect. Perfect. Didn't you get the memo? Oh, shoot. There you go. Screw you, dude. Screw uh, that guy. <laughs> oh, I love that. And now, uh, is he going to rebuild the home or rebuild something there? <sighs> He's got to, I guess. Brick by brick. Justice is about more than revenge, so thank you. I never stopped thinking about you. Ooh. Now Kith. Are they? Of course. Come on. Gotta have a love interest. Gotta have a and nice little payoff. who doesn't want to kiss Christian Bale? Ooh, I mean, you who know? doesn't want to kiss Rachel, right? Am I right, guys? Who doesn't want to... Am I right, guys? No, but who really, Ooh. like, guys also probably want to kiss Christian Bale? Hey, I don't know about that. Guys. Although I prefer him with a beard. Mm. Yeah, he vanished. He never came back at all. Hmm. Maybe he came back a changed man. For the better. Maybe he's still out there somewhere. Eh, I don't like her anymore. Uh I mean I get it, but eh. Next, you know, like he could get better. <laughs> he, he deserves better. Father would be very proud of you. Hmm. Just like me. Oh, that's the thing that yeah, that his dad used or his mom used. I forgot. So the tel uh kaleidoscope or what do you call it? Uh, Sethos uh, Sethoscope. Sethoscope. Is it? I guess. Because <laughs> his dad <laughs> both wrong. It's the way it was, brick by brick. And I said brick by brick. I'm, I'm telling you, I wrote the script for this movie. <laughs> yeah. I thought this might be a good opportunity for uh, improving the foundations. In the southeast corner. Precisely, sir. Mm. 
<laughs> nice. I wonder if it shows already. Yeah. Like what it looks like. Arm robbery, double homicide. Not a case for the theatrical like you. Leaves a calling card. <gasps> oh, I knew oh it. As God. soon as he said it had a taste for the theatrical, I knew it. I was like, it's the freaking Joker. And you'll never have to. Huh. Because he's not doing it for him. Ooh. I knew nice. it. Nice I knew ending. it was going to be the Joker. Nice ending. Nice shot at the end. Love that. Sorry. That's no, okay. Even right when he said, like, armed robbery, because I know, like, the criminal acts of the Joker's character, yeah. I, I already, like, I already knew. I was like, it's the Joker. I knew it. Then he said theatrical. And then I didn't want to say it because I wanted to hear everything that he was describing. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to check if there's any post credit scene. I don't think there is. Though. No, there isn't. Okay. <clears throat> All right. All right. Just give me one second before we start our um our analysis. Let me just stop the movie recording because I think it might make it easier. All right. So now we just have to focus on the camera. But yeah. Uh. What? Like, do you want to go first or do I go first? Because you I go want, first. Because I want each of us to kind of go through everything and then pass it to the next person and then give all your thoughts and then I yeah. think that that's a better dynamic. You right. go first for sure. Oh, big list, guys. Big list. But I'm going to try to be very concise and very straight to the point with each one. Um, okay. So, Ra's al Ghul offered him the path through the, the League of Shadows, right? Um, I just wrote that down, I guess. Uh, transform from man to ideal. That's a transformative experience. It's like every person needs a catalyst. Every person needs a component, a factor that will kind of um, expedite that transformation process. You know, the the transformation from cocoon to butterfly, from, um, you know, man to bat, you know, like w whatever it is, everybody needs that kind of pain that will allow you to transform through the pain. And so I think that that was, you know, kind of like reverberate, reverberated, rever I, I always try to use that word, um, be it on the podcast or in like videos, but mm -hmm. I never could get it right. But um, it kind of just vibrates throughout the movie, kind of. You know, it it resonates. I don't know how to use these these uh, it physics words. It foreshadows like the yeah. rest of the movie, kind of. Yeah. So pain, you know, standing up in pain, just like when he finally went inside of the cave and all the bats kind of swarmed around him, and he slowly but surely stood tall in that fear. And the fear and fear and pain are kind of like interchangeable throughout this. Um, I like the idea of at the beginning of him having to venture to the top of the mountain to find the answers. That's what Ra's al Ghul told him. It's like pick pick a flower and then meet me at the top of the mountain. And that reminded me of the myth of Sisyphus, mm -hmm. which is a man who carries a boulder uh, for infinity up a mountain, up a hill, just so that w just as he's about to reach the peak of the mountain, the boulder just cr comes running back down and then he has to repeat that process and i think that that's exactly what bruce wayne was doing when he was kind of descending into disintegration you know like he was um consciously jeopardizing his own potential by involving himself with the crime scene you know stealing stuff and just being like a rebellious child essentially because he had all the right to kind of feel that and to be that if you will because he had a lot of unresolved pain and just trauma. And I think that the movie is also about overcoming trauma in many ways. And so the myth of Sisyphus is just that. And then it was Ra's al Ghul who is an enemy, quote unquote, but also it's the biggest hero for Bruce Wayne because he's the one that taught him the path. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's why I wrote Path of League of Shadows. Um, I think that it's important for you to venture to the top of the mountain and your mountain is always going to be different than someone else's mountain and my mountain's different and even the boulder we choose and the way that we grip and the way that we try to you know position our feet as we roll it up the hill it's all very um different um uh another you know theme obvious theme is that they try to weaponize fear 
And so I think that it's very interesting how Crane, a.k.a. Scarecrow, weaponized the fear gas. And Batman was taught by Ra's al Ghul to weaponize his own fear. And the only way to weaponize fear is by becoming it, he mm. said. And so I think that even Scarecrow and Crane, like they became Scarecrow. So he became fear, like he be, like embodied it. And I think, I think that that was also like a common theme throughout. Um, I, I also wrote master one's own fear by weaponizing death. No, no, sorry. Master one's fear by weaponizing fear. Yeah, so that's exactly what I just said. And then the next line is death is not considerate. I also found that very... Um, interesting how his whole life at that point you know was waiting for the moment so that that he could avenge the death of his parents and kill the perpetrator kill the guy who who killed them you know the murderer and then when someone else did it for him aka death made an appearance an uninvited appearance um it it showed him that that's true it's like death is not considerate of your wishes of your desires of your need for vengeance revenge if you want to be the one that looks the perpetrator looks looks the murderer in in his eyes as the life leaves him you know like poetic justice is not realistic like in the real world essentially you know mm -hmm. like it's just not how things work um especially the scary ones oh oh yeah so this was Back at the beginning when Ra's al Ghul said that, he said something about about how men usually weaponize fear and act through fear. And then Bruce, I forgot exactly no, what it was. No, the, the dad was telling him um, because he oh. asked, yeah, the dad, he, he said that even the scary things have fear themselves so that the bats were scared oh. when, when he got attacked by the bats. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just found that beautiful, and it also ties into something else I'm going to say later on, but I'm, I'm not going to try to jump because I'm going to get confused. But yeah, so especially the scary ones, and I feel like that's so poetic too because basically it's implying that the ugliness of men, right? Like some men just let that ugliness just nurture and grow and expand within them to a point where it starts projecting outwardly. And so the scarier someone is, usually it's because they're just projecting what's internal right. it, within them. And so they, a lot of people try to overcompensate, like Ted Bundy, you know, he was a serial killer, but he would project himself as being charismatic, as being a good man, as being a gentleman. But he had the most amount of just ugliness, and that ugliness transforms itself into fear, or into being scary and into fearing, uh, into feeling this need to intimidate and to kind of push people away so that they don't discover that amount of ugliness that's, you know, living inside of you. Um, just keeping an eye on the thing. Uh, father figure, dad spoke most and also spoke last. I also just wrote that down because the the mother barely spoke. She only spoke in the alleyway and she said a few words um but the men take center stage in all of this you know like this is a movie about also not the patriarchy per se but it's in a sense it is it's a movie about you know men's role in society you know like the like all of society can crumble or prosper at the hands of the right men mm-hmm you know, and I just found that really interesting. And, and again, like me not having a father figure growing up, I feel like I just gravitated towards that naturally. It's like it just really stood out to me how Alfred is now his father, essentially. Uh, Fox had father-like characteristics. Even Gordon has father-like characteristics. And so if people have the right father figures in their life, then that increases dramatically their their chances of succeeding. Or you like know, selling, right? Like selling, like all of the my my best friends who are today like successful and on great paths, they have a very solid family base, a very solid father that has like helped them, you know, like kind of traverse real world essentially. So yeah, so um, the other one is justice doesn't fill the endless void. Again, I don't think that any amount of externalities will ever fulfill whatever you're missing internally so you know people 
aspire to be very wealthy, to buy houses and cars and stuff, but that never fulfills them internally. And it's the age old thing of like money won't buy My you happiness. happiness. Yeah. And I feel like justice is the same way. It's like it, no amount of justice. So even seeing his parents murder dead did not bring him any sense of peace. Um, the way of the samurai, I just I just wrote this down because I saw all of the ninjas and stuff, and it kind of reminded me of the Japanese samurai. I've been really hooked on samurai's uh, culture lately. I just bought um, a book called Musashi, and I'm going to dive deep into that. And I've just been very like engaged in that culture recently, but that's for a different time. Um, theatric theatricality as a weapon, I love that because that's essentially like what we have today too. Is 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 that like people in power they use theatricality as a means of convincing the masses of their power mm -hmm. so they don't have conversations with us like like joe biden isn't having a conversation individual with every citizen to convince them that he's the president it's like it's theatricality it's ceremony it's rituals it's everybody you know acting cordial acting submissive on camera that that footage being projected nationwide and people seeing that he's the president he's the king this one's the king this one's the billionaire this so it's theatricality it's how you present yourself in the world which is very interesting and it can become a weapon or no, it could become a weapon for good or evil, in my opinion, which is what Bruce Wayne does both ways on purpose. Like he's purposely bad as Bruce Wayne, like he's clumsy. He's just a billionaire playboy, doesn't give a F about anything. But that's for the greater good in that case. But a lot of people are like that and they're not Batman, you know, so theatricality can be good or bad. Um this one to me was just mind blowing as I was thinking about it. Like I even had the urge to like pause the movie and just like say it before I forgot. But um, hopefully it makes sense. But Batman doesn't kill makes so much sense to me because instead of killing someone, the best way to truly punish them, but not punish them in just a, a strictly evil, malevolent way where it's like, I want him to suffer for all eternity but punish them in a way that they need to be punished on an individual level. They need to be punished. The best way to punish someone is in a way where that punishment is going to is going to result in a lesson being learned. Mm -hmm. Right? So you can't apply the same punishment to every single person. And I feel like even Scarecrow and Batman share that similarity because Scarecrow injects the the uh, scare gas the scare toxin and every single person has their own fear that they see like everybody's scared of something different and so instead of killing someone you inject fear so batman just like scarecrow also injects the toxins into people but their methods are different but at the end it's the same result you, you know it's like fearful it's like seeing batman come like hovering over you and you're a bad guy you see Batman and you're scared of him, maybe like that image, but then it stirs inside of you, maybe like a bunch of dialogues and conversations that have been dormant all this time. It's like, oh shit, like maybe I shouldn't have quit my job. Maybe I should have gone to college. Why am I fuck like why like like why am I in this thug life? Like why am I a criminal? You know? Yeah. And so like that's the biggest punishment is mercy. You know, if you offer mercy to a bad person just like he did with Ra's al Ghul, I think that that becomes a lesson, you know, and people can either choose to learn from that lesson, which is funny because Ra's al Ghul kept telling Bruce, like, you still haven't learned, but it's Ra's al Ghul who hasn't learned, who was stubborn in learning because mercy is an opportunity to learn. Uh, fear of one's potential, and I, I'm not going to take as long, it's just that I'm like... No, take your time. I'm not even in a rush. So fear of one's potential for good or bad. I forgot what part this was exactly. I guess it was just like a random interpretation, but um, that's often what we, oh, Alfred was telling Bruce. So, so he said something along the lines of like, Bruce is scared of his own potential. Like he's scared of what he can do, both good or bad. And I feel like that keeps a lot of people from even trying mm. anything, you know? And it's, it's fear of success more so oftentimes than it is fear of failure. You know, like a lot of people say like, oh, I'm not going to start a YouTube channel. I'm not going to start a reaction channel because there are so many reaction channels out there. But the 
but the fact of the matter is, and I say this in the most humble way possible, there's only one me. Yeah, there's only one of and there's every only one person. You. Yeah. Yeah. So there's only one of us. It's like if you like us, if you like these conversations or what I say, only I can say these things because it's being filtered through my framework and through the many years of traumatic experiences, of lessons learned, of positive, negative stuff. It, it, it's all coming like that's what yeah, comes out. Yeah, everything is subjective. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I think that that's interesting. It's like that's what keeps a lot of people from doing anything. Um, when Bruce was, you know, kind of swerving in between those ninja warriors and Ra's al Ghul was talking in his head, um, he eventually found his way to the box. And inside of the box, the bats came out flying. I just wrote down that's Pandora's box being opened. And I feel like in Greek mythology, um, I it's been so long since I've like read up on Greek mythology. But from my understanding is that when Pandora's box was open, the whole world was kind of... Um, the fate of the world was kind of just put like 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 jeopardized or something and that is literally what Ra's al Ghul was doing with that other box hmm. with the microwave box thing you know a lot of box symbolism a lot of things like that where if you open this box then all hell breaks loose and essentially people will rip themselves apart just like Ra's al Ghul said so that's the first page. I just have one more. Hold on. No, take your to, time. No, it's because it's cause I don't want to like, you know, like I, like I don't want to take up all the time. No, but. Because I also want you to speak. I'll go quick. No, don't no, worry. No, I want you to take your time too. Yeah, then you have to take your time. Okay, so um, the League destroys his father's legacy. That's all I wrote down. But I guess it'll tie into the other point that I put here. Um, so hold on. So even the master became blinded by ideals. This was the um, the kung fu looking master that had the long mustache that had to be translated. He is placed at the top of this pedestal within this hierarchy of martial artists, and and he's the master. But even he became blinded by ideals, mm -hmm. ideals of justice, ideals of vengeance, ideals of balance you know i feel like we humans we we almost always just really hinge onto and and kind of like kind of blindly really it's like we we hinge onto ideals no matter how virtuous those ideals may seem but at the end of the day like we forget that these are just ideals you know and that we live in a world where ideals are always met with death it's like death to ideals Every single radicalized way of thinking, every single radicalized way of being, like if you take Nazi Germany, for example, that was a radical, the most radical ideal in, in human history, you know, or in modern times, at least. And that also met its death. And so we still, still want to believe that ideals will make a difference. But the irony is that no matter how virtuous your ideal and your outlook on life and your intentions are, it doesn't matter if it blinds you, you know, ultimately, because then you can't move. And so that's why he died. And I think that that's why death paid him a visit. Um, when the temple is crumbling, the ninjas can't focus on the enemy. And that's what happened also in the train. That's what happened with Bruce when the thing fell on top of him. It was also kind of drawing that parallel between Bruce and the master who was murdered the same way. It just happens that Bruce had Alfred so he had love. He had compassion, too. So think about it. Alfred saved Bruce, but it wasn't Alfred who saved Bruce. It was compassion. It was love that saved Bruce, gave him the strength he needed to pull himself out, reminded him of his strength, which is when he said, all those push-ups and you can't pull it up. It's a joke. It's funny. But it represents, it embodies the strength that Bruce has. But we have to be reminded of that strength constantly. And that's why having a father figure is very important. Because especially men, like young boys need to hear that. And so I think that that's why, like that's what it represented kind of. Um, hold on. And let me think. Okay. So strike the source of his fear and embody it. I think I already covered that of like embodying fear. Um, a true, oh, this part, this, this part is pretty crazy. Um, and it just came to my head because of, 
I think I actually read Carl Jung because um, Jungian, Jung, Jungian, I can't ever say that, Jungian psychology was mentioned by Crane, aka Scarecrow, and he mentioned Jungian um, archetypes. And so this is why I thought of it. I think it was Carl Jung who said this. He said that a tree can only reach heaven if its roots go, reach hell. Yeah. I, go all the way to hell. Mm -hmm. Right. And then that's why they kept focusing on the Wayne foundation of of the mansion. You know, like it's not just a cave. It's supposed to represent the roots of his legacy, of of his family's lineage, of the blood that courses through his veins. You know, like it's supposed to represent that. And I found that super powerful. Even at the end, when everything's crumbled, Alfred tells him and again reminds him, oh, maybe we can do some improvements to the West Wing. You know, it's like remember that you have a foundation that's why they were able to like stay positive and sustain that that hope you know because hope comes from within it comes from the foundation it comes from your years of experience everything you've gone through is not for nothing and so that's what makes your your foundation firm and kind of indestructible you know even if even if the facade crumbles and and catches on fire burns to the ground if you have a firm foundation you can always pick yourself back up um, Falcone projected his ugliness. Oh, 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 this part was amazing to me too. It's like so subtle, but when Falcone was a Christ-like figure, right? Like kind of, um, crucified for his sins. Obviously there's like maybe that religious context, depending if you're a religious person, I'm not particularly religious, but I couldn't help but like notice that. So he was crucified for his sins and then he was on top of that beam of light and he was projected and, and his projection was a bat. I found that this part is the part that I said that I would do a, do a callback to. Um, it was the idea of the ugliness being being projected, right? So Falcone already projected his ugliness by making Gotham a worse place by 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 filling it with with crack fiends and just drug fiends and kind of supplying every low life person with more addiction and more you know more depression and just making everything crumble around him so his ugliness was already kind of shining all around him right well not shining but beaming out of him and then when they showed it physically happening where his ugliness was casted into the skies you know it's like there is no no retribution for him there is no reconciliation like he has been crucified for his sins he has maybe like that was his attempt at trying to find forgiveness with god to the skies but then he couldn't, you know, because God does not favor those who don't take accountability for themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I just found that super, super poetic, honestly. Um, you are only as strong as the men around you. I love how. Yeah. So that just ties into what I just said about how Fox and Alfred, you know, and his father, you know, it's strong men like that's what men need it's like if you don't have a tribe of strong men and he even found that with Ra's al Ghul. so Ra's al Ghul was also a father figure he was the first father figure he 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 encountered so it's strong men like there's a power in that um batman can control bats i feel like that just adds to his legend and it makes him you know what he was talking about like he's no longer just a man you know all those SWAT members all of those corrupt cops in that building they're going to tell those stories forever mm. of like, I was there and I swear, I swear he was able to control the bats. A swarm of bats came and whatever. And he didn't even say anything. He didn't do anything. And then he just descended. They carried him down almost as if he was walking on clouds. It's like, that's how you create a legend. You know, like your legend means more than, than your carnal meat vehicle. And that also reminds me a lot of samurai culture because that's all they had was like legends. It's like Musashi just happens to be the most, uh, powerful or the 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 greatest swordsman of all time and everybody would tell legends and stories of him so i just found that interesting and then i'm almost done uh he has to make himself radioactive was when he was inside of the wayne manor and then he started acting drunk and he started calling everybody out for what they are which are fake bureaucrats who don't care about him who aren't friends with him who don't who are just there to kind of like uh, mooch off of wealth, you know, like wealthy people just mooch off of each other's wealth. And so I think that it's important that he made himself radioactive 
someone that no one wants to be friends with, no one wants to be around. And the more he does that, the more he protects himself and the people he actually loves. So I think that that's interesting. And then lastly, the facade burns and they find refuge in the underworld, which is what happened with him and Alfred. Like they quickly rushed into the elevator and then they went down and they escaped the flames of uh, of of purification kind of it's like a purification process because in a lot of in a lot of ancient cultures and even some cultures nowadays like they view flame not as a negative thing but as a purification a transformative uh factor kind of and i just really found that interesting because alfred would would a few times throughout the film he used that term the underworld he said well well uh well, Master Bruce, if you're going to take on the underworld or whatever. So he said something like that. And that use of that wor word, it's like underworld. Underworld is equated to hell, you know. And I just really found that interesting how they found refuge in Bruce's former underworld. His former, the underworld of his own making kind of, which was his own personal hell was that cave where he fell. And it's, it's where all the bats reside and live. But when his facade burns down, the only thing that matters and the only place that one can find refuge, is, refuge in is his or her own underworld and his or her own personal hell. And the only way to accomplish that is by becoming comfortable with your personal hell because then nothing around you can impact you, you know. And I've had my, 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 my own fair share of experiences with that where just being alone and just being kind of like sitting in that pain and sitting in everything that has ever happened to you, you familiarize yourself with every room. And there was even a shot where Ra's al Ghul was walking with Bruce before that thing fell on, on top of Bruce. They were walking through the corridors of his manor and it quickly flipped in between the asylum doors opening and then them walking down this corridor. So it was this juxtaposition of two corridors. It was a contrast. And it was supposed to represent that. It's like it's like you have to kind of find comfort and familiarize yourself with every room, you know. A and the psych ward and Arkham Asylum is supposed to represent the, the rooms inside of your mind. And Wayne Manor is supposed to represent the rooms inside of yourself. And so it's all of these rooms and these ideas. And so I just found that um, cool. And then my last one is Legacy is the Foundation, which I already covered, which was the foundation beneath Wayne Manor and that is supposed to out outlast whatever facade you have. Nice takes. Oh, God. All I can't right. breathe, guys. I am a mouth breather, by the way. I have like barely have a brain cell. And so I breathe through my mouth and I try to catch my breath i have a lot of pages but and this no movie rush. no but a lot of it is like just like scrambling but and this movie silent, the is way. the one that i had the most to write about i think um yeah. of all the movies that we've seen so far but um i okay so first of all i wanted to point out the the idea of the blue flower right at the beginning and how just like you were talking about the flower gets carried across this like mountain and then that and then there is where he discovers um what he is looking for because the guy asks like what do you see kind of and then he said that he seeks justice mm -hmm. so he, even then he doesn't use the word revenge he right. uses the word justice um but but what I found interesting is that I think that the blue flower is supposed to be symbolic of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to cross this journey or this path or climb and reach this point where where when you reach that point, then you must reflect and then you kind of have to do the gritty work, which is when he does all the training. And then basically the the fact that he had to carry the flower and kind of keep it in pristine condition all the way up to, through his journey i think is symbolic of like us kind of traversing life and everything that comes with it and and how almost like impossible it is to keep ourselves in pristine condition do you think it's supposed to symbolize uh, preserving the essence of who you are yeah. and the flower represents the beautiful aspects of you? 
you know, and also, sorry to in, no, go. interject, but it's also very symbolic how they, the, the, the product used to create this toxin that, that makes you confront your fears and in turn transforms you or no, either transforms you or either breaks you just happens to be a flower because it's an essence of the human spirit. You know, so the human spirit requires fear in order to transform into its full potential. Mm -hmm. And so maybe that's why the, the, flower, the flower was so important and it was chosen to be in this storyline, in this, you know, fictional world, the source of all the pain. It's like yeah. the flower is beautiful, but it's also you. Yeah, it, it, yeah. like it's, it's disguised, basically. This, yeah. this weapon is disguised in, as like this beautiful thing. Mm hmm um what did i want to point out uh the the line where he says you must turn fear against those who prey on the fearful yeah that's a um great line. uh that was like insane to me because yeah. that i feel is exactly how power is kind of um stepped into like the role of power it's like you you are preying on the fear of those that are fearful mm -hmm. kind of by and then in that you maintain control yeah. And that's what that corrupt leader was doing. What's his name? The one that that um uh Falcone? Falcone, right. Yeah. That's what Falcone is. That's what and I feel like that is symbolic of like reality too. So yeah. Falcone obviously and all of these other corrupt leaders and everyone involved in that corruption is meant to reflect our reality. It's like people yeah. in power, people in control, and how even they, people in suits. Right, how they prey on the fearful and then I wrote that down. Where did I write that? Where the the power of fear, and then they mentioned it again, like later in the movie about like mass panic, mm -hmm. and how mass panic would be the destruction of Gotham. Tear it apart because everyone would just start like ripping, you know, kind of just ripping away at the city when they were all like hallucinating and stuff, breaking each other's skulls, just like that guy. And I thought of like, for example what what happens now like for example with like the fear mongering and stuff and and what we saw with the pandemic and what we saw what yeah. we see with all of these like huge events that happen in our reality and how it induces so much fear in us that we ourselves start like ripping the world apart wow i never even thought about equating it to what happened in 2020 and i'm not going to use the big c word because i don't right. want our video to get like shot down yeah <laughs> yeah the p word works but even that i'm gonna like lay off of but yeah that's brilliant because i kind of thought about it when i saw razal go put on his mask yeah and then it kind of reminded me of those masks that they were selling at the start of everything in 2020 and what if that's exactly what it is? It's like they just, again, I'm not trying to deny anything. I'm not going to be like poli heavily political here. Yeah. Because I actually know people who passed away from it. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. You know, like it, it is a method of instilling fear for sure. It's a strategy. Um, I wanted to mention the um, him blaming himself for his parents' death and mm. and blaming his fear for that. And I feel like that, that is super i don't know like that was super potent you know because i think that all along like he was seeking justice like not for the people who caused the death of his parents but kind of justice for himself and and by and what i mean by that is that he had to overcome his fear because and had to like there was no other choice yeah. because it was his fear that that brought them out of the play opera and mm. and brought them into that alleyway. And so he had to kind of gain that justice for himself <laughs> in overcoming his own fear. And he probably wouldn't able wouldn't be able to live with himself until then, like truly live with himself. I have an unpopular opinion. Yeah, go ahead. I think that his father is the one responsible for his own death and the death of his wife. And the reason I say that is because I think, again, this movie is also a movie about parenting. It's a movie about, you know, fathers and how good fathers, you know, uh, produce good seeds, essentially. His father shouldn't have sheltered him from his fear. The mistake his father made was sheltering him and kind of helping him escape that confrontation, that necessary confrontation. 
which is inevitable in life. It's like whether you are prepared or not, just like death is, it's like fear will come for you. Like it's everywhere, you know? So I think that Ra's al Ghul did it differently. Like Ra's al Ghul, this is unpopular, but he was a better father in certain ways, in many ways even, than his own father was. And his own father acted too much out of compassion, but that compassion turned into his own fear of losing his son, of like making his son suffer, you know, like he didn't want his son to suffer at all. And maybe that's what we like wealth produces, you know, it's the it's the confines of wealth, it's the cage, the golden cage that wealth creates. But I also found that really interesting. I was like in my head during that moment, I was like, he should have kept them there and taught him a lesson and used that fear to teach his son a lesson to help him grow. And then as in in pure Carl Jung philosophy, that resulted in in philosophical suicide. You know, it's like an ethical suicide. It's like you can't like, you know, one action results in another one. So escaping results in death. Yeah. You know? And I had that written and, and I also had written because Ra's al, Ra's al Ghul was yeah. the one that said that it's not your fault. It was your father's yes, fault. That's why I thought about right. that. Yeah. And so and, and what I wrote down along with because I did write down like what you said, too. But I also wrote down that he failed in his role as a father to protect you know yeah. um and so just like you were talking about like gender roles and stuff how how it, it was like showing that men have to kind of assert themselves and kind of have to take the helm and stuff mm -hmm. um there is that gender role where the father figure or the or the male has to protect his family yeah. and so he failed by kind of just like you know, giving his wallet and then just trying to ask for mercy and then begging. And then that's what Falcone was like ridiculing. He was like, your father was a coward because he was begging like a dog instead of a, instead of being a man and protecting and protecting. And, and even if it meant that he died, but he died fighting mm -hmm. and died like, you know, try, like, trying like trying warrior. Right. A warrior's he, death. he instead, you know, kind of. Yeah. portrayed that weakness which was his compassion and i think that alfred also knew deep down that matt thomas wayne was was the main culprit for everything happening and that's why alfred would would intervene just enough to help bruce but he would let bruce do what he needed to do because men need to do what men do it's right. like whatever you need to do you like you have to have the liberty and the freedom to do that and then um, what I really wanted to say is that I I don't even I don't think it's Bruce's fault. I don't think it's the father's fault. And then what I wanted to say is that I think that it was the fault of these corrupt leaders, which mm, is yeah. the obvious. It's like they are the ones who who <laughs> create this impoverished, you know, kind of a fraction of this city right and then cause these people to commit crimes and just like they say it's out of desperation it's out of whatever it is yeah but it's like they're <laughs> driven to those points it's not like these people just do it for for no reason yeah yeah i was gonna say that the movie itself also like the the obvious layer is the social commentary and the social criticism the socioeconomic aspect of it it's a criticism on capitalism and just the different hierarchies that it that it provides and i don't know if raz al ghul in this like with with like these goggles for example like viewing it in this like through these lenses through this lens if raz al ghul is supposed to represent communism or something you know because it kind of alludes to it at the beginning he's in china you know you have the communist star yeah. so i don't know like it could be taken that way but i also like often like to just analyze things on a humanistic aspect and like leave politics to the side but yeah to your point it is a social commentary it is a commentary on classicism and elitism and thomas wayne is one of the main people responsible for creating that discrepancy do you, his father yeah because he's like the main like he built gotham essentially like the the wayne family and that's why falcone said like you're just the prince of gotham so right, he's but the I royalty think i felt that his father was trying to bridge the gap he in was between he was trying to but to me it came off as overcompensating and mm -hmm. that's why he wanted to work in the hospitals and like work with people in need i feel like because it's multiple generations, just like Alfred said. So it's six generations of of the, 
of the Wayne family. So maybe his father wasn't even the culprit. But the thing is, Thomas Wayne wasn't courageous enough to do something about it. And that's where Bruce Wayne breaks that cycle. And then he redefines. And so I think that that's important why it burnt to the ground. Because now he's going to rebuild his legacy. Right. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I wanted to mention the sacrificing your footing for a killing strike or, mm. a, or a killing stroke. Um, when he was fighting Ra's al, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. Ra's al Ghul. Ra's al Ghul. Um, and then he said that, like, you sacrifice your, your footing, and then he falls into the, the water, into the ice. Yeah. And I, I mentioned that because I think that that can be said for anybody who feels like they are seeking revenge, and then they're actively, you know, kind of just, like, wanting to spite people or mm. wanting to, whatever the case is, and you are at, like that's that's your main focus you'll end up losing your own foundation like your own footing in in regards of like you'll be so focused yeah. on that thing I that you d you don't apply that focus and concentration to yourself and what mm. needs to be done for you yeah and that is also reflected in the whole idea of like being aware of your surroundings and that's what Razal Gul was all about but i 100 percent agree is that he was so focused on on Ra's al Ghul that he forgot about his own morals and ethics. And so that's what it kind of is alluding to. It's like, no matter if, if the building around you is crumbling to the ground, always focus on your purpose. Like, always focus on what got you to the dance, kind of. And that's what Alfred even kept saying. He's like, oh, like, if you just make it personal, he said, towards the end, then, then all you are is a vigilante. And so that's why it has to be more. It can't be personal. It has to be purposeful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then I put when he said we're two, um, like we we are two, and he was just referring to himself as Bruce Wayne and himself as Batman. I I wrote that down because it was him like uh, kind of kind of hinting at people that he was embodying two identities mm -hmm. at that point. Yeah. And then the 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 hearing aid thing that was helping him listen in on conversations. I feel like what's interesting is that. To become Batman, he had to literally become a bat. And so he had so bats have like a heightened sense of hearing. They they are more active at, at night in dark. And that's when he is Batman. So you don't see him being Batman yeah. in the daylight. So he is only Batman at night. Mm -hmm. and he ha he has his hearing thing he has like his eyes kind of like smudged with like black makeup which probably well i don't know if it if it messes with his vision or not um and then also uh the fact that everything um the fact what where did i write it before i wrote something about like how oh so he has to make himself invisible which they which raz al ghul oh raz my god raz raz was yeah. was teaching him too that you can't just make yourself um disappear yeah. you have to make yourself invisible you, you have to become invisible right yeah. exactly and so the the what's what's fascinating is that he even cloaks himself as a bat and so he not only is cloaking his identity as Bruce Wayne, but mm. then he's he's like literally the way a bat cloaks itself, yeah. you know, uh, while it's upside down in a cave. Right, because he could have just put the outfit on and then just walked around the street, which, by the way, in real life, I've seen um, on TikToks on TikTok. There's like a TikTok account where it's this guy that basically pretends to be this version of Batman. And he walks around the city, but he walks like a normal man. And so he's not Batman, but he's dressed like a bat. So it's the difference. It's like Batman becomes the bat, just yeah. like you said. And it's interesting because he, he kind of like takes on all of the little intricacies and the mannerisms and everything. Yeah. And then um, the Batcave, like wasn't Alfred saying something about the Underground Railroad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought that that was interesting, too, because the Underground Railroad was like a passageway to free the slaves. Yeah. And that is what Bruce is kind of setting out to do as Batman. Wow. So he is setting out to free the slaves of this like social hierarchy, social like classes that has been 
set in place in Gotham City. Corruption. Yeah, right. It's like sle- it, it's saving the innocent from the hands of corruption. And then let me think what else. Oh, when he was standing on that like tower building thing, mm-hmm. he looked like a gargoyle. So yeah. I was seeing a lot of like symbolism of different like scare because obviously this movie was ta- was like uh, very much so about like fears and stuff with the whole gas hallucinogenic gas and stuff but there that where he's standing there and he looks like a gargoyle which is meant to scare away i'm not sure what exactly it's meant to scare away but i know that gargoyles are meant to be intimidating yeah it's supposed to scare away i think evil spirits from inhabiting castles back yeah in the day. and then and, and then scarecrow another scare element yeah. and then even the name raz al ghul ghoul is like ghost right the so ghost. so it's like a play on the word you know yeah. ghoul is is equivalent to ghost well i don't know maybe i'm reaching no, here it's probably right and you guys yeah. can't take me serious with this mask <laughs> yeah. on but let's just say that i'm right okay but i promise i'm almost done no, so i'm gonna try time. to jot through this quickly no. i know you want to jump in too so feel free to jump in no no i'm gonna but, let you go um the rabbits that were hiding the drugs it was literally disguised so the the drugs were disguised mm. as these rabbits and that was also a theme in this movie was the disguising of oneself Masks. so batman right batman and then crane with his mask and whatnot and then the 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 color black obviously is meant to resemble like bats in nature and stuff but i also think that it was interesting because i see it as like a a color that resembles death and the funeral so kind of like the death of this person that he once was after the death of his parents um and now you know it's also yin and yang like that iconic symbol of the black and the white and then there's bits of the black in the white and there's bits of the white inside of the black that to me was what bruce wayne and batman are it's like the yin and yang but then you have elements of each within the other mm-hmm. you know because batman doesn't become an entirely new identity there are traces of bruce right, exactly. and then bruce has traces of batman he go he's like in between both yeah um which is in between worlds by the way so crossing into the underworld what else was i going to say Hmm. Oh, when Rachel gives him the arrow spearhead, I said that it was supposed to be a reminder of his childhood. And then that kind of brings him back to his roots a little bit. And obviously it's like the initial of their relationship kind of brewing. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to point that out. Um... Oh, yeah. And then I wanted to say, like, there's no way that he was causing all of this chaos <laughs> and then thinking that nobody would die as a result, like the possibility of someone dying. So like him saying that he doesn't kill people, I think it's almost like when I watch Avatar, right? And yeah. then he's like wreaking havoc on everything in his Avatar state. And then he says that he's never killed anyone. But but you have to think but that you clearly yeah see men falling off, off of building yeah like yeah. exactly so in you know when i see like cars flipping like sure maybe they survive but there is the possibility that they don't so you're still yeah. risking that possibility so you still are a murderer yeah and, and you can't to an extent right it's mm. like if i just went on the highway and was speeding like crazy and just like causing people to swerve like that makes me a murderer already because i'm causing that yeah you know what i mean putting lives at risk right exactly um but let's see oh uh all that's left of his father is his name and stuff like um alfred kept like hinting at that like this is what your father left and stuff like you you carry the name like you are the only thing that's left or or whatever or or even that this manor is the only thing that's left and that's why he says like the bedroom is yours and stuff the master bedroom Mm -hmm. but then at the end he realizes that what's left of his father is not the name it's not anything material but it's what it's it's like that compassion that he's always felt towards Bruce, mm. you know? Yeah. And then that's when he says, I forget what. 
oh, that legacy is not in what is owned, kind of. Yeah. So it's not anything that you own. It's not anything that mm-hmm. is like written in, in, in whatever documents or whatever it is. Yeah. But rather like what you, what you are and what you stand for. So, so Bruce's legacy is is very, um, very similar to his father's because it's like about just freeing people or trying to help people so they had similar legacies Mm -hmm. but bruce's way of doing it is just his way and his father's way was his way right um let me see nothing here oh all of the criminals that got less let let loose from arkham asylum i don't even know like what like why i wrote that down but i just thought that that was crazy like Mm, rapists and serial killers oh i wrote it down because i thought that it was fascinating that crane all along like he was trying to harbor these criminals right Mm -hmm. um so that they wouldn't go to jail and then at the end they all get let loose Mm. you know like it was his fault that now there's all these like yeah, sickos like real sickos like on the streets who w- who would have otherwise been locked up which is a perfect segue for what i'm assuming is going to be joker's right. character arc because he's yeah. going to recruit all of these insane people yeah. And, yeah unstable well now they're definitely unstable after the like powder the, yeah. uh, the well gas. they have the end anod- well no he says uh, the effects right are yeah. permanent um i'm almost done no, I, I it's it's really my last stuff um very interesting points though so far oh um the the train was built by his father as cheap transportation and the irony is that Bruce has to destroy the the train in order to protect the people of the city. Right. So his father built the train to try to bridge the gap between the people. And then Bruce, like to me, it was like a full circle moment where Bruce has to destroy the thing that his father built in order to also protect or look out for the people that were that are less fortunate and everybody in the city rather the way i saw the train was that it's fluid and it moves in between different class structures just like i said during the um like during our watch through but i also think that the train is supposed to represent a vehicle that can be used to transport destruction or transport peace and prosperity and so that's why you see the train going into the slums and you see the train going into the skylines and then at the end Ra's al Ghul is using that train that represents Thomas Wayne's legacy and Bruce Wayne's legacy and family name he's using that train to drive it into the tallest building and and in order to wreak havoc and destroy crumble everything so I think that yeah, like destroying the, d- destroying his dad's kind of like skeleton and exoskeleton is a prerequisite. Yeah, and then the last thing I well I have two last things, but he, the house burning down was was exactly what Alfred said. Like he's gonna rebuild it brick by brick and stuff. Like he was telling Alfred that, but the way that I saw it is that he needed to rebuild his own foundation so everything like everything that's happened is like his old self just dying which rachel pointed out like uh, you you no longer no longer are the man you were before you disappeared and before this and this and this Mm -hmm. and i think that that the house burning down the train being destroyed like all of these things kind of being destroyed that were in his father's name are meant to happen that way so that he can build his own foundation like even if he tries to build it the same way or whatever the case is but he has to do it himself because it's like a a, like a rebirth into this new identity that he's kind of growing into which is batman and i found it important too and very symbolic how when alfred asked if he's going to build it the same he said yes to retain the essence just like you said like the moral compass and the ethical framework that his father kind of um ingrained within him 
But then the one thing he changed was the bat cave. And so you keep the essence, 80% of what makes you you of all the good, but then you add a 20% of your own signature. And then the last two things is um, what I said before, like Rachel disapproving of, of his new identity and saying that he's a changed man. But what I found interesting is that he disappears and he comes back to save those of Gotham City. Mm-hmm. And like to serve justice, right? Yeah. And I saw that as like a symbol for Jesus Christ dying and yeah. resurrecting and then saving those as a result, like saving everyone, mm-hmm. you know, kind of cleansing of the sins. Yeah, there's always like a religious undertone for sure. And then and then I, I heard you like saying like, oh, he's like bad as Bruce Wayne because obviously the way that he's perceived like him being the drunk or whatever. But I think that... But that's on purpose. Yeah, it, that it makes him great at being Bruce Wayne because everything that he's doing is like purposefully done that way. Throwing off people's Right, yeah. and, and that he, he, he isn't a playboy, millionaire, spoiled, whatever. He what he really is is just someone who knows how to manipulate that aspect of his life which he could be by psychological standards considered to be a sociopath or or a psychopath in various senses you know in yeah. like various ways because he's able to just play and take on roles you know and his identity is fluid but that's why I can't wait to see like the Joker make yeah. an appearance in this because of just that line at the end, like, oh, there's someone else who has something for the theatrical, yeah. just like you do. Alluding to the similarities. And this is their card, and it's a Joker playing that card. And yeah, it's just, I I like that though. I like that. I like the whole aspect of all the theatricals, like the scare, like Crane with the scarecrow, mm-hmm. and and everything, everything that we've seen in this. It was just, it was a great experience. Like I, I wasn't expecting it. Like Me I've neither. always been a more of a Marvel fan, yeah. but it's also because I've never watched any DC movies, really, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, like, I'm just, I'm really impressed. Yeah, me too. Um, but yeah, that was a great commentary. <sighs> yeah, it was um, I am starving. I think we're both starving. Yeah. And it's been a little over three hours at this point. So hopefully you guys enjoyed our watch through. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the commentary at the end. Again, I think that that's what will over time at least set us apart or make us unique i guess within this like oversaturated world of reactors is that we just really feel and assimilate things heavily you know because we both had our fair share of traumatic experiences and just rough past and childhoods and upbringing so we all always filter that stuff through and we try to learn as much as we can through these pieces of art Right. So with that being said, the very last point is that you face your fears, mm-hmm. you it, it become your fears, yeah, in the best way possible. You embody it, yeah, and yeah. and you'll rise above it all. If your house is burning, sit in it. Like, and don't isn't be afraid. one of the movies Batman Rises? I don't know if that is one of the movies. I think the third movie in the trilogy is called Batman Rises. Batman Rises, I think. Yeah, is it something? What's like that. the next one? I, I think, think the, the next one is Batman Rises. No, I think the next one is The Dark Knight or something. Like, like it's something like that. Yeah. The Dark Knight? Really? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Oh, because shoot. I checked before we started this trilogy. Why did I think see. The Dark Knight was Ben Affleck? No, you're you're thinking about the Batman that came after Christian Bale, I believe. Yeah, I know, but th- that's why I'm so confused. Because Ben Affleck's Batman involves, like, Superman, I think, and stuff, which we're also going to eventually get to. Because isn't it the Dark Knight and then the Dark Knight Rises? Yeah, I think it's Dark Knight Rises and not Batman oh, Rises. Oh, but the Dark Knight Rises. I think that this is the only one that's titled Batman, and maybe it was just for people to get interested in it, like, invested, and then once people were hooked, they felt okay with like just calling it the dark knight hmm. making it more poetic maybe that's so weird so what movies is ben affleck's is it just like justice league stuff or does he have his own batman movies 
Uh, I think it's, again, I think it's one with Superman in the title. So I think it's like Batman versus Superman or something. So, but that's it. He doesn't have like his own Batman. Trilogy, no. Oh, all right. So that's what I was confused. I don't know, guys. Comment. Like I, just like I said, I know of like the characters and stuff. Yeah. But I never like knew. I was over here thinking that I didn't think that Christian Bale's Joker was Heath Ledger. Christian Bale's Joker. Oh, yeah, oh, I okay, was. Yeah. I was thinking that it wasn't, but now you told me Dark yeah. Knight, so it it is. So now I'm even more excited because I'm I'm about to watch the full experience of Heath Ledger's Joker for the first time, which a lot of people deem to be the greatest superhero movie of all time, which is the one that has the Joker in it, which is the next one, I believe. So I'm beyond excited because if this one is just the start, and I already have two and a half pages filled with notes <laughs> yeah and almost an hour of a conversation after the fact it's like then that one is going to be something special you know and i have high hopes for it hopefully it doesn't disappoint hopefully you guys enjoyed everything do you do you, do you have anything else to say uh hopefully you guys enjoyed everything the commentary the reaction if you did best way to support us is by dropping a like that 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 cringe youtube talk it's like smash that like button turn on the notification bell yeah. share this with your friends and don't forget to subscribe but also, don't forget that it's never wrong. To be mentally gone. And to be Batman. I'd, Where is he? I'm going to disappear now. Where is he?